What is the most unbelievable instance of computer illiteracy you've ever witnessed? I work with a guy who for two months and countless visits from our it guy claimed that his computer was still going slow. So the it guy set a dead computer tower, which isn't even plugged into anything, next to the one that he was using. And now my coworker says it goes twice as fast. It's called the PC bow effect. I used to work as a tech guy in a high school. One day, the head teacher's secretary called me to reception because the fax machine wasn't working. I had a look at it and it seemed to work fine. So I asked her to show me what she was doing when the fault occurred. So she put the document in the slot, typed in the number, the machine word up, and the document popped out the other side, as normal. You see. She said. No, not really, what's the problem? She looked at me, like I was a complete and utter moron, snatched up the document, and started waving it at me saying it's still here. And that's why I had to explain to a grown woman, that a fax machine isn't a teleportation device. Somewhere, someone was getting the same thing faxed a lot. Someone keeps teleporting me sheets of paper. My grandfather, bless him, in his late 70s just learning how to use a computer, and he would enjoy spending an hour or so in the evenings getting creative using the paint app on his laptop. I was talking to him about replacing the ink in his printer as it was running low. Then a look of horror came over him, and he leaned in closely and said, Em I've been using the paint app on my computer, how much ink have I been wasting? He thought using the paint on his computer, without printing it, was using up his expensive ink. Bless him that still makes me laugh. That's actually really adorable. I work as tech support at a university, so computer illiteracy keeps me employed. There's one professor I've had to teach to right click on multiple occasions. Also, just last week a woman, corporate client, called about a strange message on her computer. Outlook had detected she moved time zones and asked if she wanted her laptop to change times to reflect her new location. It's just asking if you want to adjust your email to your new time zone since you're an hour earlier here. So I'll get my emails an hour earlier. Some people really think computers are magic. So I'll get my emails an hour earlier. As in, she thought emails were delivered by a person at a specific time and the person who did it would do it earlier in the new time zone. No idea. I just said yes. I worked in tech support in the mid 90s at a company where computers for admins and sales were a relatively new thing. So I have a million stories. Got a call from an employee insisting her new, tested mouse wasn't working. Went through all the questions, is it plugged in, do you see the arrow on the screen, and could hear her clicking, so I knew she was at least doing something. I finally went to her desk, and saw that she was using her mouse up against the monitor, trying to click on things right on the screen instead of understanding the mouse up on the desk, cursor on the screen setup. That's absolutely precious. I like how we talk about computer retarded people the same way we do about a 3 year old, or a cat. My uncle has step by step instructions for accessing his email, which is the only thing he does on his computer. Anytime he makes a mistake, he shuts down the computer and starts over. He also moves the mouse into position, takes his hand off completely, then pokes the button very carefully. This is awesome, I've seen older people do this. My grandma used to do this. Except often when she would stop, she'd take her eyes off the screen to look at the mouse while giving it a really hard click and the cursor, or as she called it, the cursor would move way off point. My mom seriously thinks she can only access email from the computer on which it was set up. She has created a new email address for each new computer she got. My grandmother flipped out when I showed her how to access her Hotmail account while on vacation in another state. She watched, mesmerized, as I showed her how one can log in from anywhere, as long as you have the correct username and password. The following week she sent a mass email to the family expressing her concerns about how nothing on the computer is safe, and that I was able to hack into her computer from Florida. Major Fasipum. You will really blow her mind, when you explain, that she's been hacking into Hotmail's computer this whole time. My dad asked me what time a company's website closed. I told him 6, and we'll take care of it tomorrow. There's actually a U.K government website, part of the DVLA, that you can only use during certain hours. I was amazed when I found that out. 
In recent memory, I can recall an instance where my mom had a recipe open in Chrome and I wanted to show her a YouTube video. I opened another tab in the browser and she got mad at me because she thought I deleted the recipe. Just remember, she had to teach you how spoons work. It's what I remind myself when my mom needs computer help. That is sort of useful thanks. With my parents they just don't have the thoughts to google the problem to get an answer. Their first instinct is to ask a person for help. It's sort of cute that they trust me over google. The first email my dad sent me when I went away to college and the first email he ever wrote didn't have any spaces in it. It was just one long word dotted with occasional punctuation. He didn't know what the space bar was and thought the computer would just add the spaces automatically. It was hilariously adorable and every time I think about it, I get a little sad I didn't print out and frame that email. The only way to teach an old person to type is to tell them the keys are almost exactly like a typewriter, but you don't have to press as hard. I took a physics course from a professor who got their PhD in biomechanical physics, i.e. how fast the cell moves or at what rate does the mitochondrial proteins work. Complicated science stuff. One day the professor was using PowerPoint for a lecture. The Adobe update icon popped up and they had no idea how to resolve it. They restarted the computer and within 5 minutes it popped up again. The entire class watched in amazement as this professor struggled with the Adobe update icon. The professor cancelled class for it to come fix the issue. It's always amazing watching professors with years of training and knowledge in a specific field struggle with the simplest of problems. Customer call. Hi. My computer isn't working. Me. Okay. What happens when you try turning it on? Customer. Nothing. Me. Can you check to see if it's still plugged into the outlet? Customer. I dunno. It's pretty dark back there. Me. Can you turn on a light? Customer. Nope. The power's out. Underappreciated. A co-worker of mine, an older gentleman, knew how to use Excel, but nothing else. When he needed to type up a document, instead of opening up a word processor, he would open up Excel and just type his document into one cell that he enlarged to the size of an 8.5x11 piece of paper. Well at least he's resourceful and able to problem solve. He really likes to think exclusively in the box. Kawalker asked me to turn the clicking sound off on her keyboard. She thought that the sound keys make when you type on the computer keyboard was a sound effect similar to when you type on a cell phone. Nope, it was her long fake nails making the keys clack. She refused to believe me, so I told her to call tech support. No idea how they handled it, lol. Unplug it, then have her type. No, but like, really, the keyboard thingy, or whatever, makes the sound. It doesn't have to, like, be plugged into anything, you know? Like her iPhone. I just threw up a little. My mom tried to download Uber and accidentally registered herself as a driver. This amuses me on many levels. I like to imagine if it was a sitcom and she started getting Uber requests and she was like oh crap I better go pick these people up. For what it's worth I think my mom would make an excellent Uber driver. Except she would probably try to pull up directions on MapQuest or something. One time I heard my dad cursing at his computer in the basement. It started with single word crap and dammits and slowly progressed itself into a rage. Finally with a tone of desperation he called for my help. I walked in. I was working and then it just disappeared and I can't get it back, he explained. His hands moving wildly from me to the screen to the sky. It's gone. As he went on, I stooped over with the mouse and dragged up the window that apparently had been moved and was peeking just above the taskbar. He facer palmed and gave me a light jab on the shoulder in appreciation. What would I do without you? I love my dad. But I fear for him now that I live on my own. Rage against the machine. I worked with a woman who would tell me her web page was wrong. She didn't have a web page. It took me a while to figure out she meant her desktop display. Her excuse? I can't remember all those terms. You'll just have to know what I call stuff. I had to do support for the whole office. She thought it was perfectly reasonable that I should learn 12 different names for common computer things instead of her having to learn the correct ones. She was also a female dog. She's also dead now. And I don't care. If I promise to learn your terms, will you let me live? 
my coworker doesn't know how to create a PDF directly on the computer, so she prints things out then scans them to create a PDF. A lady at my work couldn't figure out how to take a screenshot of a web page, so she printed it out and scanned it and then sent it as an all-staff message. 